Shocking details then of how a night out of fun ended with an innocent man losing his life. So how did we get here? How have we become a society where such extreme violence appears so commonplace? Is it down to a generation of young people who are simply disaffected? And if so, what can be done to help them? Well, we are joined now by Patrick Regan, author of Fighting Chance, and a man who spent 15 years working with London's teenagers. Crime statistics go up and they go down, but there is a feeling, isn't there, that this sort of unprovoked extreme violence is becoming more commonplace. Is that your experience? Um, I've, I mean, yeah, I've worked in the inner city for 18 years and I've definitely seen an increase in it and uh, I've done lots of research as well, went to LA and it's interesting in LA they say, you know, you guys in London, you think you're just as bad as us. We're not. Someone gets shot there every day. But then they said this, if you don't tackle the drivers of why kids are getting involved in these situations in the first place, you end up going down the same way. But if you tackle those drivers, you have a fighting chance of solving this issue. And how do you tackle that? Why are so many people, and, and the teenagers you, you work with often in, yeah. in gangs, getting so angry and therefore sometimes violent so quickly, naught to 60 you described it as? Yeah, I think there isn't one issue. I think there's a combination of issues. You know, for some of the young guys that I work with, I know that some of them get excluded from school. Um, when you're excluded from school, you've got more chance of being involved in gangs. And then you go home, your mum's working multiple jobs, you're living in a poor area. And if you're the bloke of the house, you think, I want to go and get some money. And then some bloke comes up to you and says, 1,500 quid, just take this drugs for me around the corner. And then suddenly this gang, it sort of becomes like your family. It becomes this alternative family, this sense of belonging. And then it becomes part of your identity. Then you end up doing some stupid things to get respect and often those stupid things can lead in people losing their lives which is just tragic you mentioned tackling the drivers sort of the the the, the things that drive people on to do these these crimes commit these crimes yes. what are they how can they be tackled is there a one-size-fit-all answer no i don't think there is a one-size-fit-all i think where you're seeing results is when you're seeing local people often in the voluntary sector that are totally under resourced living in local com communities coming up with some incredible innovation uh, tackling the drivers of family breakdown poverty educational failure high unemployment and coming up with things which are just incredible you know i refuse to accept that this is a lost generation i think hope is a refusal to accept the situation as it is some person once said to me a hopeful young person doesn't join a gang and i think that we we need to work hard at coming up with long-term solutions, not knee-jerk reactions to the latest headlines. And we need to take a bit of responsibility and get involved. That's going to get harder very briefly, obviously, facing cutbacks in, in the voluntary sector and the, the police. Are the police doing enough in, in your head? I think where I've seen the police work really, really well is when they've gone for an engagement model alongside an enforcement model. I've seen examples of this in Islington when they've worked alongside the community, where they've worked alongside the voluntary sector. And I think the tragedy is in all this, we haven't done partnership well and we need to um, bring the best out of each other. You know, faith groups, local authority, police coming together and, and taking a long term view of it, creating alternatives. And clearly a very complex problem with, with lots of complex answers. Patrick Regan for now, thank you very much. For Thank joining you. us. Thank you.